Big exciting news as uh, Representative Green says you're going to get a stimulus package approved. Who? <laughs> uh, who? Who is this? Uh, Representative Green? I, I I don't know him. <laughs> Who is Representative Green? Um, is that the one that was married to Drew Barrymore? I loved him when he was on MTV back in the day. Really, really funny person. Um, really quite great. Uh, you know, uh, you know. I, I didn't like him when he had the beard when he was doing the stamp comedy. Uh, but I'm very excited that he knows about our stimulus package, considering he's not in the negotiations. He's not. Um, he's not a part of Nancy's caucus. He's in the. Re he's in the representative of house, uh, but he's not part of her caucus. Uh, he doesn't talk to her. And so it's very interesting that everyone has an opinion about what's going on. But apparently Representative Green says you're going to get a stimulus package approved this week. <laughs> Is this just like um, Inspector Clouseau of, of the House of Representatives? Very fascinating. Do we believe him? Do we not? And do we knew, even know who the hell he is? <laughs>
is that there's a lot of unused money from CARES Act 1 that Steve Mnuchin wants to repurpose and he doesn't want to just let that money sit around because Treasury took it out of Treasury's bank accounts and it's now sitting in agencies that are now shut down because they're no longer operating from CARES Act 1 and he wants to repurpose that money or put it back into Treasury and Nancy's not fixing that situation. <sighs> Interesting. Well, maybe he does know something. Um, it's sort of like, you know, the hairdresser uh, who knows the inside information about the celebrity, and then they're you know, like, oh, it's just a hairdresser. And then he's like, but did you know? Oh, maybe you really do know. So uh, really quite interesting. This representative says that they're almost about to be done. Okay. Uh, then comes this, the CNBC News article minutes ago that says, wait, the president has a real problem. The president tried to avoid two major subject matters over the last two months, did not want them to be defining his re-election, and now they are redefining his election, COVID and the economy, He and of which two items he has neither fixed. He has not addressed COVID uh, straight on, and he has not addressed second stillness straight on. And now both situations are not growing well with him. Greg Valeri, US, chief U.S. policy strategist for AG Investment, says you can make an increasing good case that the economy is starting to level off and the labor market shows it. He's got both a soft, a softening economy, which means the economy is getting worse, and now a renewed focus on COVID-19, and both of those don't play into strengths right now. Well, the reason why they don't play into strengths is because he hasn't done squad about either of them. Uh, Biden now holds an 8.3 percentage points ahead of uh, uh, Trump. I'm not going to go over a lot of percentage points on this channel, at least for now. But uh, he was desperately hoping to change the subject away from COVID to something else, says Valeria, which is absolutely true. And that something else was the Supreme Court. And we know what happened when he had that Rose Garden party for the Supreme Court nominee. And now that's on to back. Now it's going back onto the one story that Trump does not want to spend much time on, and that's COVID. At, at the end of the day, there's so much that the economy can improve while the virus is still at risk, uh, says C. Freeman, senior macroeconomics at, at Makani Sheev. The economy is largely now in the heart of hands of parties negotiating stimulus since CNBC right to now. And that should a deal done, Trump could use that to provide hope that the recovery can't keep going. Friedman says the longer this pandemic goes, the more halting of fiscal policy, which is stimulus, the greater chance that there's more permanent damage to the economy. Brian, broad concern is that you really do have some scarring, hurting of the economy, so that the run rate of the, of the growth in the medium term is going to be lower. Um, it's now basically saying that, hey, the president has not got to two critical things done, COVID and now second stimulus. And you're going into the polls, you're going into, not the polls, you're going into the election, and you don't have economic relief done. You don't have people having stimulus checks in their hands. And ultimately, how can you tell Americans a false narrative? This is my opinion now. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to say. And my opinion is the following. This president has played a false narrative game with you for the economy for upwards of two months. And the game has been played very... Um, uh, ineptly by Larry Kudlow and Mark Meadows, who no one really believes either way, that the economy is a V-shaped recovery. We're all doing great. We all have jobs. We're all making a lot of money. We're all, you know, driving Lambos. We're all, you know, getting our hair cut every single day in San Francisco. We're doing really well. We can eat, we can afford $12 ice cream. Ultimately, he may think he can pitch that false narrative, but the people who don't have money are looking at their bank accounts and say, that's false, I don't have the money. You can say whatever you want to say, sir, I don't have the money. And so my opinion is that false narratives don't work with that. He can do other false narratives like social issues, the police, those type of things, um, how fit Biden is, and all that type of stuff. But when we get to real core issues, which is someone's bank account, they look in the bank account, there's no money. You can't have a president just sit there and says, your economy's completely rebounded, congratulations, you're doing really well. No, I'm not. I don't see any money in my bank account, sir. And so ultimately, people won't vote for the person because they think that you're not giving them the truth and you haven't given them any money. So as we sit here today, how important is executive orders? Oh, it's incredibly important for executive orders. How important is a stimulus package? Well, you know what? Some people have had really good comments in the last 24 hours. I'm going to go over them right now. One of the most common comments I got was the president should do both executive order and should be doing a deal with Steve and Nancy and get them do both done because we need a lot of stuff and we need a lot of stuff right now. The issue at hand is 
so many people are hurting in so many different ways, and all those people are going to be voting for this president. And we sit here tonight, and we talk about a single $1,200 stimulus check. Well, when would we get it? When would we get FPUC? What are the routing times? Let me go over them right now. If there was literally a law today, you could get funds within about 11 days. Okay, that's before you vote in the polling place. It may be after you vote by mail, but it is before you vote in the polling place. Well, we can't have a law today. How soon could we have a law? We could have a law in five days from now. We could have a law in three days from now. So you still could actually physically have a stimulus check in your hand before you go into the polling booth. Absolutely, categorically, yes. You could have a $1,200 check if you're an individual, $2,400 check if you're a married couple, $500 for dependents, $500 for adults. Ultimately, you'll look at that check and you'll say, opinion, this is my opinion. You'll look at that check and say, yeah, thank you for the measly $1,200 check. I've been reading for this since March or May, April, and this is not really going to cut it. And you think I'm going to vote for you because you gave me a measly $1,200 check? Well, you and Nancy and Chuck and all those people are going to go because this is not sufficient. This is not a stimulus package. And in fact, I've been watching that guy with that purple shirt, and I know how much you gave to uh, head of the Treasury, head of the Judiciary Department. I know how much in raises you gave to everyone else, and all you gave me was this jackly little $1,200 check when I was entitled to checks for every single month for six months and I have struggled or I, I'm on SSDI, SSI, Social Security and Railroad Benefits. I didn't get a first stimulus check because I was a dependent and so this time around what did you do give to me? You didn't give me a full $1,200 check, you gave me a $500 dependent check. Ultimately people look at the thing and that's in their hand they're going to say um, yeah, thank you for the $1,200 check or thank you for the $500 check, but that's not enough and I'm not voting for you. And people aren't stupid. The things that come really on the 11th hour is sort of like the mailer that comes in the mail and you're like, oh, there's a mailer that comes in the mail that says vote for me. I, well, I just got it today and so that's a little tacky. Um, it's sort of like when a check comes in the mail one minute before you vote. It's like, hi, I'm the president and here's a check. Can you go vote for me? People sort of see that. Now, ultimately, there are other types of things that you may see in a different light. And those are things like FPUC and enhanced unemployment benefits. You know, you know that the president did get you the LWA if you got LWA. You know that Nancy and uh, Nancy did not get you LWA. You know that Democrats did not get you LWA and didn't get you any and, and allowed your FPUC to expire. You'll remember that when you go to vote. So ultimately, the president did a double executive order and also the executive order for FPUC or LWA right now. Imagine the impact on that. So as we sit here today, um, when they say he's desperate to change the subject away from COVID and that other subjects the Supreme Court, I'm sorry, the Supreme Court's not going to get you reelected. That's my opinion. You got to do economic recovery as well. Um, electoral College. The President Trump was able to weather the bad October f surprises four years ago, but in 2020 is not 2016. And the, his contraction of COVID-19 comes at the perilous moment for re-election and the race for control of the Senate majority, says Beacon Research in a new memo issue tonight. The biggest problem for Trump is that, within de is that with the days dwindling before the election, election day, the focus on COVID and himself has become a huge opportunity cost when he was looking to change the dynamics of the race. The way he could have changed the dynamics of the race and the day may be shut, the door may be shut on him by this point, is that he could have done incredibly comprehensive executive orders for stimulus checks and got them out in a way that helps him. Now it's not going to help him. It's too late for him because the effects, of the subject matter has switched. But... <laughs> Our focus is us. Our focus is us. And ultimately, my focus is you getting money. And so the Purple Power really needs to step up. It needs to step up. I didn't do too much Purple Power in this video because we have Purple Power coming up right after this. But obviously, there's two things that you really need to be pushing. One, the president. He needs to do executive order. Every single comment of every single video of four hours of programming on this channel every day is do the executive order. What's going on? Just get it done. Just do the executive order. Push it, Meadows, Mnuchin, all those people need to do executive order. They need to understand that you're not going to vote for someone if he doesn't get you the money. Second, you need to really push with seats for stimulus. I 
don't know, but I have a feeling that these Democrats who put a thing to a vote last week and are so proud of you know the, the bill that passed the House last week that's dead now uh, are going to go back to their jurisdiction and say, you know, I did a wonderful thing last week. I got I got a bill that was very partisan uh, that no one really wants. That's very bloated, passed by the House. <laughs> you know, uh, Earth to Mars. That's not a bill that anyone wanted. So we need to keep that push as well. The Purple Power on social media for seats for stimulus and say, hey, hey, um, get a par bipartisan resolution. Doing a bad bill is not an achievement. If you don't give a stimulus, we're taking your seats. And ultimately, the narrative changes so often by day to day that it's almost too hard now to say support the problem solvers bill because the negotiations have gone beyond that. So now the discussion is get it done. <laughs> Just get it done. Get it friggin' done because ultimately it doesn't seem like it's happening. I was going to go over that and start with that, but let me do it now. Steve Mnuchin and Nancy Pelosi's negotiations continued yesterday, continue today. They're not spending an enormous amount of time. They're spending about 16 minutes a day, yeah, 16 minutes a day uh, on the phone. They are not revising their numbers too much. To, well, today they did not revise their numbers at all. Um, so I don't know why this representative Green uh, said that they're getting closer. No, they actually didn't change their numbers today. They actually confirmed. All they did was go over the nuances and the descriptions and the terms of the conditions. The holdouts remain FPC, $600 a week. She doesn't want to move on it. Mnuchin, $400 a week. He doesn't want to move on it. State and local, she's at $400. She doesn't want to move on it. State and local, he doesn't want to move at $200, among, uh, $200 billion. So if these people can't move on numbers, can't say, I'll give you this in exchange for that, which they have done before, now they're not doing it, then ultimately you can't have an agreement. Now, I can sit here and say, <laughs> I can sit here and read every single quote from Mitch to Nancy to Steve um, to Green to the president to Steve Scalise that all says, we're going to get it done, we're going to get it done, we're going to get it done, we're going to get it done. Really great news, smile, smile the entire video, and then you'll be like, uh, well, what happened since yesterday? Well, you know, they're going to get it done. They're going to get it. They, they say they're going to get it done. Ultimately, we have to call. We have to call the cat black if the situation is not as so clear as they claim it to be. And today, the situation is not clear. So we're calling it as it is. Ultimately, you could have your stimulus package. I could literally sit down on a morning's LLA broadcast and say, congratulations. They apparently moved on their numbers overnight and now we got progress. But as today, Monday, there was no progress on numbers. Coming up next is Purple Power. Let me answer some of your questions. Michael Watts, pol politicians live in different worlds. Jeremy, Pelosi needs to quit worrying about finding fault with the president and do her job. Oh, I love that. Larry Torres, her Nancy and Mitch need to go. Patricia, we the people need stimulus checks now, not later. Poppy Star, Nancy doesn't care about anyone. Fred Crawley, Pelosi is her own problem. She needs to be removed from office. Elliot, Nancy is insane. These poor children, less. Uh, whatever she's smoking should be a controlled substance. It sure isn't bought. Uh, Susan Moose, Nancy wouldn't know the truth and slapped her in the face. DG Frank Gee, the Democrats and Republicans have tarnished our country's reputation. So you see three people in a row in, a row in these comments that say, I don't believe them. I just don't believe anything they're saying anymore. So I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, everything's wonderful. Everything's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> no, no one's, no one's buying it anymore. Tory, at this point, we need a stimulus package and executive orders. Two checks, see? told you. That's what viewers are now saying. Both things. Nancy has uh, two things. Jay Marie. Nancy has wishful thinking. Tracy, how can anyone understand what Pelosi's saying? I'm giving up. <laughs> Anna Wee, it's pathetic. Um, Patricia, Pelosi's been saying making progress for months. I'd be asking how many months is this thing going to be making progress? I love that. So you see the, the sentiment of the purple power. I mean, we're not negative people, but we're also calling crap crap when we see it crap and we're, and we're just tired of i'm making progress you know um jared if this thing really cared she would have already made a deal on friday very well said grandma duck apparently nancy pelosi's idea is one month one month equals six months <laughs> sharon i feel strongly that everyone in congress must have a mandatory psychological exam hmm. gloria i guess they really don't care about us karen dragon lady has no words for it she is the problem very well said susan stay positive stay positive mark when are we going to get put out the old cow to pasture nancy's book of spells to deter the public ashley uh the reason you and everyone can't understand what nancy is saying i think is because she might have 
have brain freeze from a $12 ice cream. Oh my God, I want to, everyone has jokes tonight. Gloria, why don't you get in there and ask the big question, what, when are we gonna have stimulus checks and don't stop until you get an answer. I love that, Gloria Urban, I should. If you've not, go to the front of the channel, subscribe. I mean, you know, you see why this is a good community. Uh, this is a smart community. Yeah. I have really educated you well, informed you how things are passed in Congress. I've educated you about the negotiations. I educated you about sentiments and, and, and conjecture. I've helped you understand the difference between fact, third-party source data, um, opinion. And now you're able to sort of understand what's being thrown at you. Really incredible. So go to the front of this channel, subscribe. Also like this video. Coming up next is Purple Power. Got to tune in for that. We have a new call to action tonight. We really do. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, and stay up. Bye. Bye.